So the trouble with my reading is I'm always trying to balance doing fun video concepts and reading the books I really wanna read and that fulfill my reading goals. And today we're gonna try and mesh the two. We're gonna be using a bingo board that one of my patrons, Emma, made me. When I saw this come from the Discord, I just could not believe it because firstly, it's so incredibly touching that someone would take the time to make this for me and it's like personalized to me and my reading goals. I never could have even thought to make something like this for myself. So thank you so much, Emma. And I was like, this is perfect for a video. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the blessed me. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be using this bingo board to reach some of my reading goals, but also to read some of the books that I really wanna read. So, I haven't got a set TBR. We're gonna see how we go as we go along. Let me show you the bingo board. This is it here. Let me read you out all of the prompts going from left to right. We've got five star prediction, romance, 2024 release, subscription box or book of the month, last book in a series, <laughs> classic 2024 TBR, buzzwordathon, nonfiction, self-destruct, which is my books that were self-destruct in a year, Shortest book you own, sequel, not last book in a series. And the middle one is a five star. So that's if I get a five star in this vlog, we can tick that off. Want to read but doesn't fit into any vlog. That's like <laughs> most of my TBR. From last haul, I don't know what was on my last haul actually. I have to go back and check because Oh, it's probably my birthday haul. I have to go check. It's my birthday haul. Rose Prompt, Random Number Generator, Agatha Christie, Wrapped Up Book, Mystery Slash Thriller, 2023 TBR Cluedo, Gifted Arc, Patron Poll, No Plan to Read TBR Cluedo. So that is our prompts. And with this video, the way I want to do this is I want to start off just by reading a book or two that I want to read and seeing what they tick off. And then we'll start trying to make bingo. Because if I'm just trying to make bingo, I end up just like going along a line and like ticking all of those off. So I think it's more fun to read a couple and see what we filled in by then and then try to fill in the gaps. So for a book to start off with, I knew I wanted to read a book that ticks off multiple on there, but I didn't have any set plans to read and my choice got chosen for me pretty much. With TBR Cluedo this month, I selected a book that I just cannot wait any longer to read. And so our first book of the vlog is gonna be Warm Hands A Goes by Catherine Arden. <laughs> the music lay there. I am so excited to read this. This ticks off five star prediction, 2024 release, 2024 TBR, want to read but doesn't fit in vlog, no plan to read TBR Cluedo 2024. So that's how many that ticks off. Maybe five star, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, I'm gonna be reading Catherine Arden's new release. <sighs> God, I'm so nervous, guys. This is, I've spoken about this so much, but this is a historical fantasy, I believe, set in World War One. We're following two siblings, one's a soldier, one's a nurse, who are torn apart by war, and then there's something bizarre going to happen. I love, I showed this in the TV Cluedo video, I love the sprayed edges. I love, <laughs> I love the art. Oh my God, this copy is just so beautiful. So I'm gonna start this today. I'm shitting bricks. I think I said this in the TV Cluedo video. Like, I am so, <laughs> Nervous to read this, but I am so excited. So I'm gonna go make a start on this. And like I said, this ticks off quite a few of the bingo. So I think it's a good one to start with. I will let you know when I'm a little bit of the way through, but um. <laughs> Some of these books I'm so excited to read. I just feel so much pressure to start. But anyways, we're gonna go make a start. I'll check with you. Maybe when I'm like a hundred pages in on my initial thoughts. Several days later. Hello friends. I am a hundred pages in into the warm hands of ghosts. I have been reading it with the dust jacket off, but the dust jacket is here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we know what it is. I also love, I just want to show off this hardcover because I just love it. Isn't it so gorgeous? Anyways, I'm a hundred pages in. So not a huge chunk of the way in, but I have started the book and I have a lot of thoughts. So I think I told you the synopsis of this is basically what you need to know. We are following Laura and Freddie, who are brother and sister. Laura is a nurse and she at the start of the book has been injured kind of like whilst caring for soldiers in Europe. She's sent back home to Halifax in Canada when she receives a box of her brother Freddie's belongings. And that would usually mean that her brother is dead. However, she gets like both of his tags and one of the tags is something they usually send home with family and the other is something they usually keep on the body. So she's like, I'm confused about that. She sends letters to people in his regiment or people that would know and they all say that he's missing. So he hasn't been proven dead. He's missing. I think that's in like February of 1918. And then we also have flashbacks to November of 1917 when Freddie is on the battlefield and he gets trapped in an overturned pillbox with a German soldier. And so it is split timeline. <laughs> that's the sad thing I want to address. How this can't be true. Tell me it isn't. However, 
My issue with split timeline is always when it's two timelines competing for dominance. This is not the case. We have like maybe three chapters of Laura's perspective and then one of Freddy's and they're usually quite short. So it's very clear that Laura's perspective is the narrative that is driving the plot forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if that kind of present day timeline at one point ends up being all that the book is. We kind of do away with the split timeline this, but it's not bothering me. I've actually been very much looking forward to Freddy's chapters, but then looking forward to kind of the, I like the, the security of it. <laughs> a predominant timeline. So I'm really enjoying that. The number one thing I want to say is I have had my breath taken away at multiple points with Catherine Arden's way with words. I just can't explain to you guys how incredible a writer she is. And you know, when you read a book and you're like, you are just, you are just amazing with words. It makes me realize I've been reading a lot of shit. <laughs> Joking. Not a joke, just a fact. Not a joke, just a fact. Not a joke, just a fact. <laughs> I'm joking, but it makes me like feel like, oh my god, how uh, uh, how are any other books existing in the world when this is the quality we could be achieving? Just her way with words and the way that she describes characters is always done with such intelligence. There's this moment, and I don't know if it will like it will translate me explaining it to you. But we have had these scenes where we've met Laura. She's a nurse working in a hospital in Canada and she's had like, she's overheard doctors kind of having a go at her for doing these male jobs. And we've heard how she's kind of like sarcastic and has like a strong opinion. And there's this one sentence just describing her appearance where it says, Laura Ivan was sharp faced and amber eyed, her jaw angled, her mouth sweet, her glance satirical, a little sad. And it's just, I mean, that probably hasn't, I probably haven't done justice to it. But when I read it, I was just like, oh, like I just like, I can just picture her so well. And the way, the choice, the choice there of like, for example, her glance satirical, a little sad. I don't know, it makes me feel like it's such an interesting choice of things to introduce us to her. Like that's all we really get of her appearance, I feel like. And that's like, that's what we get told. And it's just an interesting choice, a collation of, of elements, right? I haven't really figured the book out yet, I don't think, like in terms of what the book is trying to do. I feel like there's something under the surface of that kind of original plot. And I haven't figured out what that is yet. But am I happy to be back with Catherine Arden? Absolutely. I you are my ride or die. You are my home skillet biscuit. You know what I mean? I it, I started this on Tuesday. It's now Thursday. So I only read 50 pages each day on Tuesday and Wednesday. Not because I wasn't enjoying it, just because I didn't have time. So it's now like three o'clock and all I'm doing for the rest of the day is reading this. <laughs> I'm going to go sit out in the garden now and hopefully read as much as I can. And I've got reading sprints at half four with my patrons. So I'll make some good progress then as well. But um, yeah, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, Catherine Arden, you're way with words. Also, I got another parcel from my Amazon wish list, and I just want to take this as a moment to express my gratitude because I've had a few um little deliveries from my Amazon wish list, and I can't tell you how thankful I am whenever you guys support me. Not that I'm not that I'm not asking you guys to do this <laughs> at all, but I just want to say thank you to anyone who's ever done it because I really do appreciate it. Anyway, so shall we see what this is? I cannot tell you how this is a book I almost just bought when I was last in a bookshop. Oh my God, is there a note? There's a note, who's it from? And then I'll show you. It's Ellen! Oh my God, Ellen from Discord. <laughs> Ellen from Discord. Ellen's bought loads of people books recently. Oh my God, Ellen, thank you so much. Just a little gift to show my appreciation for you and everything you do. So excited for big things to come. Hope you love this book so you can visit me to it too. Ellen, thank you so much. Ellen, you are so kind. Ellen's bought over the past couple of days loads of people books, so. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. So this is Butter by, what's the author's name? Asako Yuzuki. Um, this is translated from Japanese. It was a Japanese bestseller. And I think kind of based on a true crime about a serial killer cook. <laughs> I've heard really good things about this. And when I was last in Waterstones, I almost bought this. This is such an exciting release. I'm so excited for this. Gourmet cook Monaco Kaji sits in Tokyo detention center, convicted of the serial murders of lonely businessmen who she is said to have seduced with her delicious home cooking. <laughs> I'm so excited. That is, oh my God, Ellen, thank you so, so much. That is so kind of you. Okay. I also just love the cover. Like I love the yellowness with like butter. <laughs> Love the yellowness. Anyways, I'm gonna go sit out in the garden and I'm gonna go start. I've been yapping for too long. I'm gonna go read more of this book. Yeah, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Catherine Arden, love of my life. <laughs> Rally the 
truce for another refrain I sing this softly to myself I sing this softly morning cuties it's the next day i am now on page 240 of sorry i still haven't got the dust jacket on <laughs> warm hands with ghosts and i'm really enjoying it what the book actually is has finally crystallized like in those first 100 pages it's not in entirely clear what the book is doing and i've spent the last 140 pages realizing what it's trying to do like the year of just realizing stuff and everyone around me were all just like realizing things and i'm very much enjoying it i don't usually what like like war books. Usually I'm like, <laughs> like I feel like it's overdone as a genre, particularly World War II. This is World War I, so it is a little bit different. But usually I'm not a big fan, but I think that the people that this one is following and the kind of human nature this one is following is very interesting. I don't know if it's a five star yet. I feel like this is the kind of book that is going to be very emotionally impactful at the end. At the moment, I'd say it's a four, but with a possibility to go to a five depending on the ending. One thing I think is very interesting is how can Catherine Arden embodies completely the kind of storytelling of the historical time that her books are about. So we, this is fantasy as well, but in The Baron Nightingale, she's in old Russia. So the fantasy is all about this, this kind of old folklore and the house spirits that these people believe in. And she brings that storytelling to life in like a fantastical way. And this feels very different because she's in embodying a different time period. This book feels so different in writing style, whatever, because of, I think it really is down to the historical time period she chooses to write about. So this is a lot to do with like the stories that soldiers would tell each other and tell nurses and that kind of storytelling that came up in the war to help people cope and get through the war and so it, it feels very different because she is completely encapsulating that time period does that make any kind of sense i think it's fascinating Catherine Arden, <laughs> what you do to me so yeah i don't have a ton more thoughts because I think really my opinion on this is going to hinge on that, on this last section. But I mean, it's Catherine Motherfucking Island. I'm having a wonderful time reading it, but I feel like it's really building to something. And so I'll see you when I finished. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm gonna go sit out in the garden and finish it this morning. And yes, we shall see. Hello, beautiful people. I have finished The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. I had the most glorious time out in the sun reading this with the cats. I also made this incredible chicken salad with smashed potatoes <gasps> in like a big bowl with like a whole head of lettuce. Oh my God, it was like so good. Anyways, we're like, <laughs> besides the point, I am giving this five stars. <laughs> I'm giving this five stars. There was a moment there where I wasn't sure if I was going to give it five stars because I think a lot of my five stars this year have been categorized by me like being unable to put the book down. The book where you're just like, you can't put it down, you're obsessed with it. There wasn't that with this. There were moments where I, I wasn't wanting to pick it up as much but I think it's a very heavy book without some of those, even the thrillers that I've rated five stars, five stars this year have some like tropey campy elements to them this is kind of without any joy to it so i think that's why but towards the end of reading it i just kept feeling like oh my god i i can't believe i'm supposed to leave these characters like i can't believe i'm about to finish this book and then i just have to walk away and like i can't read any more with these characters like they just felt i wouldn't say it's hard to describe i wouldn't say they felt like oh my god the most three-dimensional characters i've ever felt but i just felt this like attachment to them that was very <laughs> something about Catherine Arden, like she just does something to me and in a way she makes me speak very um philosophically and i feel like need to bring myself to that level. And this book reminds me of something like Babel, where the book just feels so big. Like the book feels so grand. You can tell that the author has poured so much of their being into this book. I feel like sometimes books leave a trace of that where like, 
a book is so, there's so much filling it, there's so much energy, there's so much energy poured into the book. And I feel like you can really feel that with this. So I'm giving it five stars. I would still say, if you've never read anything by Catherine Arden, I do think The Bear and the Nightingale is a safer bet. I can see why some people haven't loved this, right? Even though I love it, I don't think it has quite the like path that some people would like to follow. But I, I just loved it. The, the imagery, the settings, everything felt so real and visceral. And the author's note at the end really just brought everything together in a beautiful way. So yeah, I loved it. I'm so glad I got round to it. Ah, it was so good. Let me go get my phone and we'll see how many of the bingo prompts we've ticked off. Okie dokie. So it was a five star prediction, 2024 release on my 2024 TBR, five stars, want to read but doesn't fit into a vlog and no plan to read TBR Cluedo 2024. So, Guys, we always have bingo. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Lord help me, let's see what happens. I thought this vlog was gonna go on for so long. Like I thought <laughs> I'd be reading like four books at least in this vlog, but we almost have the diagonal bingo. But we need to read a wrapped up book. We're getting another sneaky <laughs> episode of wrapped up here in this vlog. Okay, actually I, so when I, my last video was my bookshelf tour and I had to move my TBR, TBR Cluedo monthly TBR over there and it's knocked over a wrapped up book like off the pile and it's been bothering me the past couple days but not enough to pick the book up. So I feel like it has to be that book. I feel like fate has led me to it. Okay, I can't believe you almost got bingo. This is crazy, <laughs> we're doing another wrapped up book. This is it, it's a fairly unassuming paperback. I don't I don't feel like I would have picked this otherwise. So let's just see what it is, what we're gonna be reading. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, shit. No, we have made the wrong decision. I thought it'd be like something oh, I'm gonna give five stars and adore. It's not gonna be that. Um, This is Shine by Jessica Young, who is a K-pop star. And this is a K-pop YA contemporary. It was in my self-destruct, which is a prompt as well. So it'll fulfill that. Is it a romance? Yeah, it's a romance. It'll tick that off. <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> but at least it ticks a few other things off. Yeah, this was on my self-destruct TBR. These books will self-destruct in the year if I don't read them. And a lot of you told me that I'm probably not going to love it. So this vlog may be a tale of two halves because we had a book that I've loved and maybe we're now gonna have a book I'm not gonna love. I'm gonna go ahead and read it. I'll check in with you when I'm probably about halfway through. But after the comments on that self-destruct video, I am not feeling incredibly hopeful for what this book can, can give us. Anyways, I'm gonna edit some of this video and then I'll start reading that a bit later. Oh my God. <laughs> What do I want to say? <laughs> it's like so aggressively mediocre. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Yup, 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 yup. So here's the thing. This is by Jessica Jung, who from what I can tell, I've been doing some research, okay? She was the lead singer of Girls' Generation and left in a scandal. This is her book about, oh my God, a young girl who's Korean American, gets scouted whilst on holiday to South Korea once while singing in a mall and gets, you know, scouted and eventually ends up in this band, but she also has an interest in fashion. Oh, that really sounds like the exact part of her. So this is basically autobiographical. I feel like celebrity fiction books do this all the bleeding time. Like, I feel like there's been loads of influencers who write YA books about an in a girl who becomes an influencer, and actors who write a book about a girl becomes an actress. Real Housewives, what are they writing about? Their stuff is so autobiographical. I mean, Real Housewives who hate their cheating husband. I will speak for myself. That's a horrible thing to say. No, it's not. So it is semi-autobiographical. And thus, I think if you're a fan, it's fun because you're kind of like, oh my God, who are these people? Like, who are the villains supposed to represent? Like, what's the tea? But for me, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> it's like an aggressively bad to mediocre written YA book, in my opinion. I'm not, I'm not hating it. Like, it's fine. I think it is an interesting perspectives to read. You know, it's talking about the negative 
um, impacts of kind of the trainee lifestyle when you're working to become an idol in the K-pop world and trying to prove yourself and all the strict kind of pressures that they're under of like of being weighed weekly and not being allowed to gain weight or the intense training they're under and I think that is interesting but uh, you know I can see where this book is going already she's currently a trainee she wins a chance to like in the this, this is the synopsis it's not a spoiler she wins a chance to duet with like the biggest k-pop guy you know like the heartthrob he's currently in the, in the band or whatever she wins a chance to do that but she's also interested in fashion so i can tell i think there's a sequel to this spoiler alert if anyone cares like she's gonna get into the band by the end of this book she's gonna debut and then in the next book she's gonna leave the band because she wants to like make clothes or something Almost like it happened in real life. <laughs> it's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, I, you know, I think if you're interested in K-pop and want that behind the scenes element, because I think you can tell, I mean, obviously I don't think she wrote this like entirely herself. <laughs> I was controversial to say. But, um, you know, I think you can tell she has quite a big influence in it and kind of the stuff she wants to talk about in the industry. So I think if you're a fan, it's interesting. But if you know it, it's not great it's not incredibly well written so what a come down from the warm hands of ghosts that is a title right i always get that title wrong the warm hands of ghosts yes but you know we wouldn't appreciate the highs if we didn't have the lows but i knew this was coming as soon as i unwrapped this like i'm glad i'm reading it because you know it means i've experienced another book on my tbr and i'm not a dnf -er nor unhauler <laughs> by nature so we i had to read this at some point once it entered the tbr matrix but um it's not great. It's not great. Okay, I finished Shine. <laughs> Guys, I think if I'm truly honest with you, for my personal enjoyment, I have to give this one star. <laughs> Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? <laughs> I said this video would be a tale of two halves, but um, I don't know if I knew quite how much. Now, I do have to say, I think for its target audience, which is young YA, in my opinion, it's maybe like a 2.5. But in terms of my enjoyment, I was so bored. I have never, the writing just got worse and worse and worse. It reminded me of the fan fiction I wrote when I was like seven years old. I'd write fan fiction where like I would win a competition and I'd get to go meet the Jonas Brothers and Nick Jonas would take one look at me and like love me straight away and we'd start dating. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It reminded me of that. It was like, oh my god, everyone kept giving each other bear hugs. I used to always write about that. Why is that a thing? But like, Nick wrapped me up in a bear hug. What does that even mean? Why does like shitty YA romances always say, oh my god, it gave me a bear hug? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I think we should have that conversation. And just, yeah, the writing kept getting worse and worse. I have to question, did she actually have a ghostwriter for this or did she actually write it herself because it's really bad and in the acknowledgements like one of the biggest things about why this book seemed to happen was so that it could become a movie <laughs> I'm not sure how this works. I, I can understand why the target audience of this would enjoy it, but I just really hated it. Also, it's half a book because this is a duology, but like it, nothing is really resolved <laughs> in this first book. There's so many plot lines that you're kind of left waiting on, particularly the romance. I don't think it's it's left in a way that feels satisfying for a singular book, if that makes sense. Oh, guys, <laughs> it's really bad. It's just the writing. It's like fanfic, it's like young, it's awful. And listen, there's some great fanfic out there. I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about with like bad, poorly written fanfic of just the way that people act and like describe things. Oh my God, the, just, the things that were described, every outfit was described, every way people moved was described. Oh my God, there's horses outside. <laughs> horsey, horsey, don't you stop. Just sit your feet, go clippity clop, and your tail go swish, and your wheels go round. Give me up where homeward bound is. I'm glad I finally read it. Like, this is one of those books that's weighed heavy on me for a long time. I haven't wanted to unhaul it, but I haven't really wanted to read it either. It's a book I've thought about for a long time where I'm like, oh, I just wish I'd read that but at least I read the warm hands of ghosts and absolutely adored it I cannot recommend this enough I think it is such a unique special book but this vlog really was 
<laughs> a turn of two halves. Also apologies, I thought both last week's vlog and this week's vlog I was gonna read so many books for but just because of the how they ended up I have not. So this book ticks off romance on the bingo board, it ticks off self-destruct and most importantly it ticks off wrapped up book and thus we get bingo. So yeah I thought I was gonna read like four or five books in this vlog but alas we only read two. Um, it was a lot shorter than I anticipated it being. I thought it was gonna be a much bigger vlog project but let me know if you read either of these books and what you thought of them. I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you got into the end of the video comment a little ghost emoji for the warm hands of ghosts and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!